Hey, we want to welcome you back into the 53rd Avenue Church of Christ Wednesday night digital youth Bible class. We are certainly glad that you're here. Tonight we're going to continue our series, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. This is part two of that series, looking at the life of Joseph from the book of Genesis. And so we're glad you're here. I encourage you to be grabbing your Bibles out and then turn into the book of Genesis uh, where we'll be picking up with his story in just a little bit. Uh, but before we do, we do want to spend some time in prayer. Um, and uh, that will be coming up in just a bit. After our first week, one of the things we realized is that uh, we probably didn't budget enough time for prayer requests to be shared as well. We probably needed a little bit more time on our discussion questions, and so we will have a little bit extended times on, on those sections as well. And one of the other things you'll find this week as you come to the end of uh, the program this week is uh, that we have left in an extension on the end of the video where uh, you'll basically have a blank screen, but what that will allow for is for if you want to hang out in the chat for a little bit uh, and catch up or uh, just say hello, whatever it may be, uh, you'll, you'll have an extended period for that at the conclusion of the video uh, should you want to stick around. And so we'd love for you to do that. Uh, it, and so, uh, like I said, in just a moment, uh, we'll encourage you to share those prayer requests and I'll be back to lead us in prayer. See you in just a moment.
at this time, we'll encourage you to continue to share those prayer requests if you are, are doing so, uh, and to continue to pray on those things that you see come up on the screen. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and lead us in a, in a general prayer together. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we uh, can come together and look at your word. Father, to study it, to learn more about what it is that you would have us to do. Father, as we specifically talk about this subject uh, of, of just when life is out of control, when, when there, we're not sure what the next step is, Father, um, help us to, to trust in you and to continue to live in a way that would glorify you. Father, I pray for each and every one that's tuning in tonight, that um, pray especially for those situations that, that may have been shared this evening. Father, as we look to the beginning of a school year and there's so much unknown about how things are going to work, um, I just hope and pray that you would give everyone a safe and blessed year, that you would um, continue to protect us from the coronavirus and from other things that may try to be stumbling blocks for us, whether that be a physical health issue or something that may be an emotional or physical or spiritual struggle. Father, I pray that you would be with us through all of those things. And so, God, we give all these things to you and trust in your power to work uh, in these situations. Father, again, we, we just pray for this time together. And, and Father, I pray that each and every one that is here tonight is blessed, and is, um, is encouraged, Father, to, to continue to grow in their relationship with you. And Father, uh, that, that even though we're maybe at a distance from one another right now, that Father, we can be united in many ways through technology, and we thank you for that technology. And we just hope and pray that we can do everything we can to encourage each other while we have this opportunity together. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, and we offer this prayer in his precious name. Amen. All right, in just a moment, we'll be back with our lesson. All right, so as we get into our lesson, uh, very excited to continue our study uh, of Joseph in the book of Genesis and encourage you to be turning your Bibles to Genesis. Uh, specifically, we're going to be reading in just a moment from uh, Genesis chapter 37, and so I encourage you to turn to Genesis 37. Uh, but as we as we get started, you know, last week we talked about Joseph's early life, his family dynamics, and we encouraged you to pay attention to how you're affecting your family. And, and that's something that's really important. A lot of times we we uh, can be a little oblivious to how we may be impacting those closest to us. Uh, but tonight we want to talk about uh, the fact that sometimes there's nothing you can do. And, and when there's nothing you can do, God is still with you. Uh, there are many times where your life, you may not be in control of all the decisions that are made, or maybe very few, if any, decisions are yours to make. When there's nothing you can do, God is still with you. And so as we talk about that, you know, one of the things that's changed in our modern culture is the use of emojis. You may have noticed this. Uh, some of us have become very proficient, really good at answering texts or social media posts with just an emoji response. We can tell entire stories just with emojis. And so there are some that, I, that I've really fallen in love with. I, I really like the clapping hands. That's become one of my favorites uh, because... Uh, there's nothing like emphasizing an entire sentence by putting clapping hands in between every single word. And then you can visualize me saying it. It's a great way to clap back at people. And so the other one that I've sort of fallen in love with is the uh, skull emoji, which is the perfect response to anything that you don't actually want to respond to. You can be saying it in the sense of, I'm dead. Not literally. I think I think if you're watching, you probably know what I mean. Uh, but it also has started to be used in place of the laughing emojis, which is both weird and somewhat refreshing at the same time. And so uh, I find the skull to be very useful. But you know that little emoji face, the one that um, just has circles for eyes and a circle for a mouth? And that's a super useful emoji. There are a lot of moments in life where that emoji is the answer. Right, no matter how we look at it, right, we're just shocked. There's not really great words to describe what it is that we're going through. Uh, we could try, but really, it's just a moment where we're speechless. In fact, that there is an emoji you probably know uh, that has no mouth. Again, when when words fail, and and so I think about that, and and I think that 
tonight's lesson is going to really look at, at a situation in Joseph's family where most of us, if we witnessed it, if we, um, you know, definitely if we were Joseph in this situation, we would have no words for, for what was going on. And, and so I think there's times in life that are like this for all of us. You know, uh, maybe you've had that friend that um, was gossiping about you. They thought they were gossiping behind your back. But then they accidentally sent the text to you and not to the person they intended to. Um, it's pretty awkward. Uh, and there's not a lot of words to, to say there, right? Um, it may have just been a life event that happened to you that, that kind of changed everything, right? Maybe mom and dad come home and new job we're moving and that can be a shocker you may not have words to explain what in the world is going on right uh i hope this hasn't happened to you but but maybe you've been injured at the beginning of of, of a sports season a uh, season of your sport or or gymnastics or whatever it is that you might be working on uh, that that prevents you from getting to do what you've been prepping for so long to do there's a, there's a hundred things that could happen to, more than that, but there's lots of things that could happen to us um, that can leave us speechless without the right words to say, um, without really any action that's appropriate to take. And sometimes those moments come out of nowhere. Because we're all wired a little differently, the hurt of those moments impacts us differently, right? Some of us want to just jump in and do something. Some of us just want to sit back and let it happen. Uh, and and others of us, we just, you know, we want to overanalyze and, you know, and just sit around. The reality is, is there's not always something you can do. And so as we speak about Joseph tonight, his is that situation. He's not really in a position to do much about what happens to him next. And so let's look here together. We talked a lot about his family trauma last week. I said trauma, probably meant drama, but did I? Maybe I did mean trauma, I'm not sure. Uh, but, but you know, we talked about his family situation a lot last week. You know, his brothers were not okay with him being dad's favorite. Dad didn't see any issue with him being his favorite. I'm sure Joseph didn't have any issue, but, but um, his brothers were not okay. They weren't okay with him sharing his dreams. But they're going to escalate this to a place that's quite ugly. Um, in fact, there's no other word that I can use other than it's an ugly thing that they do to their brother. In Genesis chapter 37 and verse 18, if you follow with me, the Bible reads there, it says, But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. So, again, we know that they hated them, hated him. Right, and that there was a lot of anger in their hearts toward Joseph, also toward their father Jacob, and just how everything had happened. But now they've arrived at this place where it has, you know, been in them for so long that they can't do anything but hate their brother. They can't do anything but wish harm on him. Verse 19, picking up there again, reads this Thus, here comes that dreamer. They said to each other, Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So they actually hatch a plan, right? I think many of us have said in times of weakness, I'm going to kill you. You know, and while in that moment we're mad or frustrated or whatever, most of us don't actually intend to hurt the other person. Um, usually what happens is we end up throwing, chucking a pillow across the room or, or something like that. Um, but, but that said, when these guys said kill, clearly, I mean, now they're plotting it, right? They absolutely intended uh, to kill this young man. Now in the heat of the moment, the good news is, that one of the brothers is like, wait a minute, you know, let's let's not let's not kill him, okay. Uh, unfortunately, he he doesn't really protect Joseph truly. He doesn't stop the whole thing, um, as we'll see. But at least he prevents him from being killed. And so, picking up in verse twenty-one, when Reuben heard this, that is the eldest, uh, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. 
Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So thank goodness for Reuben, right? I mean, again, they, he's, he's going to literally save the life of his brother. Um, I wish that he uh, had taken a little bit stronger stand uh, in in literally telling them, hey guys, uh, no, let's not do anything awful to our brother, much much less kill him, but let's not even do anything awful to him. Uh, but no, alas, they, uh, they, they, they throw him into the well and they take off his coat and they're not done with him. You see, a caravan of traders is approaching. Now, the Bible says that they were Ishmaelites, which uh, means that they would have been distantly related uh, to these brothers. Uh, Ishmael was one of the children of Abraham. Uh, he was not the son of promise, uh, but his descendants are going to you know, begin to populate uh, different areas, and there, here come these traders. And so the, the Ishmaelite traders are coming by, and, and again, very distantly related at this point. But the Joseph's brothers have this great idea. Let's drag him out and let's sell him. So I guess the only good news here is we've de-escalated from killing to selling into slavery. But I'm not sure there's a huge differential in terms of quality of life there. Uh, and so, uh, you know, turning someone to a slave is not significantly better than murdering them. Right. Uh, it is better, but by how much? Hmm. Uh, and so, so what they do is they take Joseph's coat, they dip it in blood, show it to their dad, and listen to this. If you if you look at verse thirty two now of Genesis thirty seven, they took the ornate robe back to their father and said, "We found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe." Let me read that last part again. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. Obviously, this is a lie. Let's start with that, right? They're lying to their dad. They know exactly what happened. Okay. But two, your son? Wait, wait. Don't you mean their brother? So most of us would say, oh, no, doesn't this belong to my brother? But that's not what they say. They say, your son, as if they're trying to distance themselves, right? You know, they didn't say, is this Joseph's robe? Is this our brother's robe? It's is this your son's robe? And it just speaks to how much uh, emotional relationship distance was between Jacob and his sons at this time. The hatred that they had for Joseph, the hatred they had for their, their father's uh, favoritism and, and the way that he treated Joseph and treated them. And so this is just a really sad situation. We see that because this conflict had never been addressed, Joseph is now, he's been sold into slavery. His brothers have lied to his father, who's now experiencing probably grief unlike anything he has in his life at the loss of his favorite son, Joseph, who he believes has been killed by a wild animal. And again, this is one of those what do you do moments. If you're Joseph, I mean, what do you do? Obviously, our stories are different than Joseph's. But we're all going to experience pain at different times. We're all going to have moments that are, are scary, dangerous, painful. And, and often those moments catch us off, off guard. Right? Uh, no one's planning to have a moment where a loved one passes away. No one was planning to be in an automobile accident. No one was planning to have a huge argument with their friend or their boyfriend, girlfriend, or these moments are tough, though. And there's going to be moments where life doesn't make sense. Why did my family member have to die? Why did that person have to be on the road that night? Unfortunately for Joseph, as we spoke about before, he, he's going to have more shocking moments in his future, right? This is not the, the worst thing that's going to happen to him. And I want to highlight, though, in the heat of this, five words that show up in the account of his life. This is going to be from Genesis chapter 39. And so if you want to turn over there real quick, 
Genesis chapter 39, five words that I think make all the difference. You see, these words aren't going to keep him from getting thrown into a pit. They're not going to keep him from being sold into slavery. They're not going to prevent all of the things that are going to happen to him as we continue to study. But they are the words that make all the difference. Genesis 39, beginning in verse 2, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph may not have had a lot going for him. In fact, his life is, is going to be on a roller coaster ride of just negative, negative, negative in terms of things that happen to him. But when Joseph is at his lowest points, when he's not sure which way to turn, he could rely always on that truth that God was with him. It may not have changed his immediate situation, right? It may not have meant that Joseph knew the plan, right? Because clearly Joseph did not know where God was going to lead him. And it also doesn't mean that Joseph could easily deal with what was happening, right? His whole life has been turned upside down and will be really for the rest of his life. But Joseph was not alone. He was not dependent only on himself. He may not have had all the answers, but he could have faith in the one who does, that is God. So in life, if, if you find yourself in a situation where there's nothing that you can do, or it's not really clear what you can do, you can know that God is with you in those moments. When life hands you bad news or something that's so shocking you don't have the words to answer, God is with you. Knowing that God is with us may not change our circumstances, but it can change us. It can change the way that we decide to approach the challenges in our lives. It's easy when life is hard, when we're hurting, when we're confused, when we're scared, to let that overwhelm us or to become angry and let that control and consume us. But when we know that God is with us, the uncertainty of life doesn't get the last word. God gets the last word and we can move forward trusting in him. I want to encourage you as we, as we wrap up to, to think about a couple of things. You know, when it comes to this, I can say it, it doesn't make it easy. Okay. I can say that when you're struggling, God is with you. And we all maybe understand that to be true. And yet the problems that we're facing don't go away. So first thing I'll encourage you to do is in life, when, when, when this is happening, something to hold on to and to remember is, is that um, be real. You know, everyone's going to go through tough times. We're all going to experience pain. It's something that's common to our lives. We live in a broken world. We make mistakes, other people make mistakes, and, and even things like natural disasters can cause huge challenges for us. To pretend like that's not happening is crazy, right? It's okay sometimes if you're struggling, and it's okay to admit that you may be going through a difficult time. If we believe truly that God is with us, then we can trust that taking those things to God, praying to Him about it, Speaking the honest truth about our struggles to him is something that he wants from us. He wants that relationship. Um, he's bigger uh, than, than our doubts and our fears and all the things that we may struggle with. And so be real with our God. Establish that relationship and have that conversation with him through prayer. Take the time when you can to remind yourself and others that God is with you. You know, I hope that you know the, the full story of Joseph and you know that ultimately things work out for him in really an amazing way when you think about it. But when Joseph was in the middle of, of all these challenges, he did not know how it was going to turn out. He had no, no way of knowing that things would ultimately work out really well for him. So what he had to do was he had to face each day as it came. And he had to try to hold in his heart the understanding that God was with him in all these things. God is with you. Your story is not over. Even if you're in the middle of, you know, the, the figurative storms of life, the difficult days, like your story's not over. It's not done being told. And we can trust that, that God is going to continue to walk with us through that. But remind yourself that from time to time, especially when you're struggling. And when you see someone that you know and love that, that is struggling in the same way, remind them, God is still with you. And 
hopefully, day by day, that will be something that brings us comfort, especially when days are hard. When you don't know what to do, remember, God is still with you. He is with you, and he will remain so. In just a moment, we're going to have some discussion time. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit extended tonight. We're going to try out uh, a little bit more time there. And so same number of questions, but just a little bit more time per question to allow for more responses. And so uh, hopefully you'll stick around for some time together in discussion. See you uh, on the at the end of that uh, to, to wrap us up. We'll see you then.
again, we're so thankful you've joined us tonight. Um, I hope that it's been a blessing to you as we've looked at more of Joseph's life, of, of him being sold into slavery by his brothers. And I hope that you take with you the reminder that when you don't know what to do, God is with you. Until next week when we pick up for part three, I hope that God blesses you, grace and peace, and we'll see you soon.